morning. Hello. Welcome, everybody. Um, I hope you can all hear me. Um, my name's Ben Hewison, and I'm from HOSCO, and I'm very, very, very pleased to welcome you all um, to say good morning, good afternoon, and for some, like Chef Andy and his team, good evening, and welcome to this first ever live and direct masterclass between HOSCO and the International Culinary Studio. Um, this is a first for us. This is something very exciting. We're, we're super pleased to be here. We're really excited about this. Um, we're here with Chef Andy and his co-hosts Liz and Zoe. And today we're going to go through the top 10 tips for perfect plating. Um, we're going to look at this through the lens of a starter, of a main course and a dessert. Um, now, Chef Andy's a very experienced chef. He's worked all over the world. He's from South Africa and now he's based in New Zealand. He's got some excellent cooking experience. I, I do believe he's actually cooked quite a lot for Nelson Mandela in the past, I've heard uh, rumors on the grapevine. Um, so he's going to take us through how to really, really plate a, a plate of food that's really wow, you know, because we do eat with our eyes as much as our mouths, and it really is a full sensory experience for the body. So the things that we serve for everybody should, should look and should also feel just as good as they actually taste. So um, this is being recorded. Um, as you've signed up and registered for this, you will receive a recording of the webinar in the future. We will deliver that direct to your inbox if you have to leave at any point for any reason. Um, we will also be releasing some shorter, <clears throat> some shorter videos as well. So you will be able to, um, to see them and watch them through Instagram and through LinkedIn. Also, they'll arrive in your inbox as well as you've now registered with us. <clears throat> and just another quick note to let you know that um, Lots more international culinary studio courses are available on the HOSCO platform. They'll teach you all kinds of things from pastry making, from baking to plating. Um, they'll actually teach you how to dress and, and really understand how to work well in a kitchen. And of course, this applies to all professional people, but all of us home cooks like myself, and I'm sure a few of the audience out there as well, um, it's also nice to learn how to do these things properly in the home as well as in the professional kitchen. Um, so without much further ado, really, I would like to, uh, to hand over to, to Chef Andy, live and direct from Christchurch. Um, and I'll just give you one more reminder, please. We do have the, uh, the chat is open, so you can ask questions in the chat. And there is also the Q&A um, that you'll see in the bottom of your screen. You can actually ask a question in there. And, and what we'll do is we'll collect your questions throughout the course of this masterclass, and then we'll take about 10 minutes at the end just to go through this. So, and, and remember, if you could please keep these questions related to, uh, to plating and to what we're going through today. Um, of course, any questions you've got about technique, any questions about height, about color, about how to use some of the special things that Andy's gonna tell you, which I, I won't reveal his secrets right now. Um, that's brilliant. So we would love to hear any questions that you've got and you know any questions around plating and around the art of making food look as beautiful as it tastes. Um, and so with that, I think I will, uh, I will pass over to you there, Andy. And uh, if you'd like to say hello, just to make sure that we know we can hear you. Thank you, Ben. So Kiora. And uh, welcome this evening. And uh, I'm delighted to be here um, on this platform and um, really looking forward just to show you um, what to do with a plate. And as we say in tonight is really, you know, eating with your eyes and the art of plating. So hopefully I can fulfill those needs and give you some tips and, and, and you know, so when you go out there and really do it, do it well. So Liz. Hi, um, from New Zealand. Welcome. It's really good to see everybody here. Hi everyone, super excited to be here and to see what Chef Andy can teach me. All right, I'm right, I'm going to be doing that. So I'm going to be plating up a starter, which I'm going to use a Akaroa salmon, which that's the hero of the dish. And I'm going to be doing a main course, which is obviously New Zealand lamb, which we can't go wrong with that here. And uh, dessert, I'm going to do a traditional dessert, I'll leave that for the end part. So we'll get through all that um, as we go along. But first and foremost, um, we need to start off with where do we start? And I'm sure Zoe would like to know how do we start on. So it's all in planning, planning and preparation. That's the big part of having to get your plate started. And nowadays there are many plates, many designs, many textures, many shapes to work on. But um, it's really depending on the institution, the restaurant, the catering establishment, where they will design or come up with a plate 
that's suited, best suited for them. So that's where we start. So where do you like to start yourself, Andy? Like, do you like to design on the plate or do you like to prepare by the uh -huh. <laughs> I love that one because I, I like sketching. So I take yeah. a piece of paper, yeah. look at the plates, and, and I love looking at all types of plates, shapes. And then I draw on a piece of paper my design with all the elements I'm going to use for, for my menu. So that's where I start really. Excuse me, how many styles of plating are there? <laughs> Nowadays, plenty. <laughs> so <laughs> to keep up with the trends, um, all restaurants are using nowadays. Um, whereas we've got you know horizontal, we've got um, vertical, we've got stacking, you've got uh, free form, deconstructed, and that's just to name a few. But I want to go back and take what the plate should look like, where we normally have a traditional plate. So I'm going to draw on a plate. But everyone has their favorite styles too, don't they? Everyone's yes. sort of, every, every chef creates their masterpiece. Correct, correct. So Zoe, just to answer your question. So we have a plate and what we call is the analog, which is a clock. I think the millennials now wouldn't know what an analog clock is. <laughs> <laughs> we won't draw anything on a digital. So a clock, so we've got a 12 o'clock, six o'clock, three o'clock and, and nine o'clock. So I've just done that. Generally speaking, on the traditional plating, your protein, your meat would go here. And that is a lamb chop. On the side, on the nine o'clock to 12 o'clock would be the potatoes, the starch, carbohydrates. And on the 12 o'clock to three o'clock would be your vegetable. So that's in traditional day what we used to use. And most places and some places really also use this style of plating nowadays. But we have evolved and innovation. The chefs have really pulled out all the stops and they're putting their own signatures on plates. So that's generally where we started with plating. Okay. So Andy, you've got your plating style sorted and what's next? So we're gonna start with the fun stuff. So we're gonna do- Tools of the trade. The starter, damn right. And before we do that, mm. we need to have the tools. So I'm gonna just go through all the tools with you so that you can see for plating purposes, some of the cap. If you can see that, I've got sauce bottles, different sizes, a tongs, those for picking up various items to plate, tweezers, different sizes. These are also very important on a, um, for plating. An offset pellet knife, also one of the key utensils. Precision spoons for sourcing. Another spoon. A mold. And this is for creating height for stacking on the plate. Paint brushes, different sizes. This is also for painting any sauces or um, um, splatters on the plate if need be. A little fine sieve. This is for dusting. And a piping bag. So these are some of the utensils or tools that you would use for plating, and that's key to have. But that out of the way, I think let's have some fun. Let's start plating the starters. So I'm going to start plating the starter, and what I'm what I've got tonight is a as I said, an acaroa salmon. I'm using um, it two ways. I've done a mousse and I've done a sous vide mikut, which is half cooked. Oops. And I'm going to be using micro herbs or micro leaves with um, a um, cream cheese. That's basically all the accompaniments that go with salmon in the whole. So I'm going to start plating and give you an idea of what we're going to end up with.
<laughs> okay, so we want to go down to the plate. So what's your favourite tool out of all these amazing tools, Andy? Well, I must say the offset spatula is probably my favourite mm -hmm. because you can do so much of that, pick up smear sources. So that is probably my favourite. And obviously a tweezer here or there. So I'm going to start off with a cream cheese cream. So, Chef Liz, mm -hmm. do you have a favourite tool or one that you use more than the others? I think for me it's probably palette knife and either tongs or tweezers, depending on what I'm facing up. Yeah, absolutely. You, every chef has their favourites, I think. Place on mousse. So that's your mousse set? That's my mousse. And that's the, the salmon. And right. So all the colours, and that's the important part. So it's the textures, the contrasts, and the colours that you put on the plate. I'm going to do using your something, hand. yeah, something Muzzle. different. And when we do, we always work in uneven numbers. So the one, three, five, seven. Why is that, Andy? It just because it looks good. Yeah. And, and it's it's no, it's not only that. It's just it's just the norm and having you know um, even traditional. numbers. It's mm. traditional, mm. and it's mm. it's it's what um, most chefs use. And so you've got some more salmon mousse on there, have you? And then yeah, got... salmon mousse, and I've got the cream cheese. Okay. So I'm literally duplicating offset on the side of the plate, and. Excuse me, Chef. Yes. Why do you use the outside of the plate? That's a good question. I'm just waiting for someone <laughs> to know. A lot of chefs um, would um, not do that, but depending on the restaurant style, because the waitress would, you know, they would put their thumb through it. But um, in this case, it's the style of plating that I'm doing. And I'll tell you now that I'm doing a horizontal um, plating, so, so you can actually see the lines. And then... I'm going to use Excuse me, Chef. Yes. You mentioned earlier about the hero of the dish. Yeah. What do you mean by that? The hero of the dish. I'm the hero. <laughs> in my family. The hero of the dish is the main part, as in the meat or the protein or the fish that is the main part that's the hero so that should be the one that stands out on the dish that's what we call the hero so how do you select your micro herbs in your garnishes like this that we're doing now very carefully <laughs> so no it's um nowadays we're actually very fortunate in having um, suppliers and growers out there that um, have such a vast um, selection that you know we can draw from, and it's it is also you know we have suppliers that just do these little micro micro herbs, micro and um, leaves. So for this sort of um, plating that I'm doing tonight. So, so I've noticed you're delicately placing everything with those tweezers. Yep. And rather the, than using your fingers. Yep. So that's the, the key on, on plating styles like this is that you would use um, tweezers because mm -hmm. um, being using delicate items such as what I have been putting on the plate um, with your fingers it becomes quite clumsy. So it's best just used. Um, the tongs and all the tweezers that we have available. What have we got going on the plate here now, Andy? So this is a balsamic reduction. Nice. Along with the cream cheese and the salmon mousse. 
So this is not only creating beauty on the plate, it's also creating quite a contrast in the flavours. Absolutely. And as with all, you know, it's all in the visual. We, we eat with our eyes, generally. And that's... Um, So when you've thought about designing this dish, you've thought, okay, I'm going to do it in linear. I'm going to do it in a bowl. Yes. I'm going to use the edging of the bowl. Correct. What were your other thought processes in deciding to do just this all the, at this point? All the color contrasts and um, and textures that go with this. That was the key here, and also all the elements that go with the actual um, salmon, which is the hero. So you're getting your textures visually and your different smells, and you're getting your visual taste smells. You're, you're going everywhere with all your senses here, aren't you, Correct. on a plate like this? Correct. Sorry, excuse me. What's this that you've put on top? That is... A squid ink tube. So I made a tube out of squid ink. Looks if you can delicate. see that. It's beautiful. So that's just not finished yet. I'd love to finish off with a gazpacho shooter to have with that. And And that will be served with that on the side. So there we have a salmon, a Karoa salmon, Mikut Dansuni style with the micro salad. And I'm just going to raise it, camera, so that you can actually see using the outer room of the plate. That looks great, Andy. Really well okay, balanced. So that's the first of the dishes that we're doing this evening. Yeah. So as you notice, a lot of delicate, a lot of sort of techniques and procedures. But as I say, it's always going back to your preparation beforehand. Once you've got all that sorted out, and it's quite easy just to put out um, as long as you know where everything goes. And it also makes sense in that regard. Preparation, preparation, preparation. All the way. <laughs> so with that um, out of the way, we can say with pride and it looks delicate, it's simple, and that's what we need to keep it, keep it simple and make sure all the elements work and that when you serve it, you serve it with pride. Okay, so we'll go on to the main course. So the main course, as I said, I was doing a lamb dish. And um, for this one, I'm going to be doing it slightly different to the plating of the of the starter so you'll find this one will be a little bit more technical in a way with placing all the elements on the plate and it's also visual that we need to look at too and also the textures that go with it okay so any questions ladies mm -hmm. quite a variety of different styles of plates now i mean people don't just use all traditional white anymore you know, no. you have colors and textures Correct. and shapes and different but um, completely different fabrics and slate and wood and quite a, a difference to what, um, you know, was originally traditional when plating. Correct. So that's why I said um, this is the playing ground of the Chef Naha Day mm. and putting out um, pieces of and works of art and visually impacts, you know. So when you sit down, when you look at the plate, you just want to tuck in. And that's what we're after, and that's where we want to, you know, um, be. So, great. Okay, so. What have we got on here so far? So I've done. So this is a different texture. This is a a pea mash. Mm -hmm. And once again, I'm using 
my pellet knife. And then always have a white cloth handy. I always do. <laughs> Not on the apron. No. And I'm now going to place the lamb. Which is on the pea mash. I've used my fingers there because I, I can. Uh, okay. And they clean. <laughs> we'll be at it. So as you can see, um, the pea mash has a bit of texture in it. Um, you know, so as long as it's um, visually, you can see the different um, textures on the plate. I have done a carrot puree. So I'm going to just dollop those. And as I said, we're doing them in even uneven numbers. And that's it's interesting, Andy, because you're guessing your very traditional Kiwi meal here with your lamb and your coloured veg, yep. but it's looking completely different to what we would have had as children. Oh, absolutely. Um, nowadays, um, we can play around with a lot of um, ingredients and also, you know, keeping the ingredients true that we don't, you know, overcook it and keeping them, you know, keeping the integrity in place. And that's the key part. And, you know, keeping the, the colors and the vibrant um, textures when we serve a plate. So, you know, the customers can see that it hasn't been you know, um, put through the, the mill, as a matter of speaking. I'm going to just finish these off. So is this a, a minted pea? Yep, as you can yeah. actually smell the aroma mm -hmm. of that. Eh? There we go. So that's a minted pea. Very traditional kiwi. For those who haven't had a kiwi meal before, this is actually a very traditional kiwi flavour. <laughs> <laughs> but looking amazing. True. Looking very sophisticated. Exactly. And with that, I've done a potato tulle, which I'll put on the side there. Just confident there. And then lastly, just finish this off. So, that's why we have to use this. So with this plate style that you're doing now, yes. what would you call this? Fantastic. Um, this, this is really an offset um, um, plating, plating style. So I'm using sort of the contour of the plate. So it's not a you know, sort of um, vertical um, um, plating style. So you're using the shape of your plate. You're using the shape you're... of the plate and also, you know, leaving some, some areas around so that it can be utilised. And with that, I'm going to serve a so reduced... Sorry, I can pizza. see why you call it art. It um, looks very sophisticated, but you don't make it look easy, almost... Well, this is it, and it's it's not very difficult to put elements or food ingredients onto a plate that is appealing to the eye, um, as long as you've got the textures and the colours and also the balance, which is quite important. So there we have a lamb, New Zealand lamb loin with a pea mash, carrot puree, and asparagus spears with broccolini, which is the tips of um, um, baby broccoli, broccoli, and the actual pea, and then a red wine jus, which... Which, of course, Andy, in New Zealand on a Sunday, most Kiwis would have grown up with a traditional roast, which tends to be lamb, potato, and two veg. I don't remember mine looking anywhere near as good as this. <laughs> Sorry, Mum. Well, there we go. So that's so. This is the 
this is the um, the idea with you know as we doing the exercise today with art on the plate and visually each and each with your eyes and that's what we have so so there we have a plate that's presented and then make sure that there's no fingerprints on the plate you just need to make sure that you wipe all the plates before you serve and there we have it so any questions right no, from here, and, and the audience won't be able to see this, but from my angle, it looks like um, a green field that you'd wander up Correct. and you've got this, like a forest tree trunk that you would want to climb. And that's what that image looks like from my angle. So it's very, very cool. Okay, Creating great. a story on the plate. There we go. And that's the idea. Yeah. I got no question, Chef. I'm just amazed at how easy you've made something so sophisticated look. Yeah, but that's all in, as I was saying, and I'm going to repeat that in preparation and also planning you know, and making sure when you put it on the plate, you know where the items or the individual ingredients are going to go in order to use. Um, Liz was saying that it creates a story, and that's what we're looking at. So, yeah. Okay, so. That's great. Yeah, I don't know if we can, you can see. That view. Right, so doesn't do it justice if we have him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to see how close I can get this because, mm -hmm. really, it, from the angle I was seeing it, it does really look like a forest. You're wandering through the forest, oh, you and you've got the field is the green, and then you're getting to this massive giant tree trunk. And in New Zealand, we have giant kauri trees, and that's what this reminded me of. Oh, excellent. Do you want to maybe get the starter too? So oh, okay. Sure. Let's just yeah, see how it. close we can get the starter. It's me reaching in. So that gives you a bit of a better look of the starter, perhaps. And of course, when we look at the chill that Andy's placed on the top there, it reminds me again of the kelp, which is a native um, seaweed of New Zealand that we quite often use in catering now too. So there's the story. There so, we go. Yeah. And Akaroa, of course, being our French village here near Christchurch. So the Akaroa salmon comes from there. Fantastic. Okay, so we'll move on to, to the dessert. And as I said, um, I'm doing a traditional dessert, which I think everybody loves a good old tiramisu. And uh, I think every household has tried different ways and different... Um, combinations of putting a tiramisu together and there's no better way than having it done and letting it set overnight and eating it the following day and that's just the key of eating with all the flavors going so i'm decided to do a tiramisu tonight with a bit of a twist and it's going to be plated deconstructed so i've taken all the elements and i'm um, serving them all sort of separately so when you have one um, mouthful, you need to take all the elements, put them in and let all the flavors work together. So I'm going to do that, but I'm going to present it on something totally different, which is a slate. It's about 40 kilograms of, a, of slate. So as you can see, I'm going to just, yeah, there we go, position it there. So what I'll do first and foremost, so obviously something to consider too when you're choosing your plates. I mean, not just the canvas that you're choosing to create your art on, but if you're obviously in a restaurant for catering, the you know, the staff have got to carry your plates and you have to have them balanced Absolutely. so they can carry them easily as well. <laughs> Absolutely. That's the you want to solve that upside down. That is also very key. So what I've done here, I've made a template which I'm going to use and I'm going to take the fine sieve and use some cocoa powder. So I'm sort of reversing this whole plating technique. And this is also, this is not new. This is something that we used to do in the day. We crisscross a, a fork and knife or a so fork and spoon across the plate and 
you need the, the impressions of it. And generally it's normally done with desserts and that would be served with the impression of the <coughs> spoon or the fork. Also the nouveau cuisine era that was often used to fill a plate, wasn't it? <laughs> Correct. We remember those days. And today it's not too far off because everything is also dainty, small portions, and, um, you know, at least you're walking away with being satisfied. Mm. We're in Nouvelle Cuisine days. We used to go past the takeaways to get another meal to fill yourself up, and that, <laughs> that's the recollection of those days. So, so that's my start on that. So you've done your uh, cocoa. Yep. Now you're doing your... This is now a chocolate. This is the secret. This is the chocolate with the liqueur, coffee liqueur, espresso liqueur. It was just on the plate. And then. So, what guidelines would you stick to to do a placing a dessert, Andy? So that's that's important because it is. You need to keep it clean and keep it simple. Do not overcrowd the plate. Layer the flavors and textures of your dessert, as you'll see what I'll be doing. And then try different plates, as you see I'm down, different sizes, different shapes. Make your garnishes specifically on desserts edible, which across the board, all garnishes need to be edible. And this is obviously, um, you know, it keeps the the whole plate vibrant with the fresh colors and so forth. So we need to do it. Even though with desserts, it does take time, it's time consuming. And really what we want to do with this type of dessert or any dessert, and I'm sure all pastry chefs out there love wowing the guests. So it's the wow factor. So the garnishes that you put on is generally the wow factor. And, and that's what we need to keep in mind. The dessert yeah. is that last dish that they have before they leave your establishment after all. Indeed. And, you know, it's the saying as you only remembered by the last dish you served. So I'm now placing the cake, which is the uh, layers, which you normally do in a tiramisu. And this is, I've used the genoise and I've soaked it in a little bit of uh, coffee liqueur and a chocolate ganache to give all the flavours in. Sorry, excuse me, Chef. Yes. Uh, what was the final component of the whole dessert? Final component is me going into the back and clapping to the rest of the chefs in the kitchen for a job well done. No, the <laughs> final component is really the garnish that you do and the sauce. The sourcing is the key. So that is where, where we are. So we have those one. Okay. Sorry, Chef, I just had another question or two. Yes. How do you come up with the final design? That's when I lay wide awake at night. No, it's <laughs> you have you do have a, an idea. Mm. Um, you know, with experience comes with experience and also, you know, um traveling, seeing what's out there, what's been done out in the, in the restaurants, you know, and keeping keeping abreast of, you know, the local and also international trends. That's key. So. Great. So what are the components you're placing on here now? Andy? So this is the mascarpone custard, and um, which is between the layers of the cake. And on that, I have a coffee bean, which I've done in caramel. And... Looking extremely different to the old traditional tiramisu, I have to say. Yep, that's correct. <laughs> Looking great. So keeping to the, the amount um, of elements on the plate with um, uneven Not numbers. Even. As you can see, I'm following that. Chef? Yes. How would you do all this for, like, a large gathering? So that's important. Um, so that will come with a team. You always have a team of chefs, and each um, chef, you know, has their their um, department and where they work. They'll be doing 
the different elements and they'll be putting it all together. So for a banquet, for instance, they will be doing, you know, their part and it will all come together. So um, that's how we would do it. So are you understanding the processes now a bit better of, of placing? I've got a bit more of an idea about it. <laughs> I think it might take me a wee while to master anything this good. <laughs> it takes practice and also patience. And passion. And passion, of course. So, what so, here? so that is just fresh cream that I've put on. And I'm just using the back of a teaspoon just to spread it out a bit. That's the reason why I'm doing that. So I want that to be a housing for the espresso pearls. Aha, uh -huh. and you've or made this in your own already to go. Oh, yeah. So before we came to that, sorry, Chef Andy was, uh, he, he hasn't slept for a couple of days. He's been prepared all this beforehand. <laughs> Seems like it would take a while easy. to prepare. So, going to finish off the plate or the dessert. And I'm just going to do, so I'm using the paintbrush. Chef Andy loves really sparkle. He won't tell you that too much, but he actually does. He loves the sparkle. Makes two of us. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be lots of questions um, afterwards that people will be asking about what you're doing and how it's all managed and oh, yeah. <clears throat> coming up with the ideas. Yeah. So, I mean, doing a deconstruction tiramisu this way is, is quite spectacular, Andy. It is. And it also gives you, you know, perspective of um, what is in the dessert, you know, and it's this is where, you know, a chef Sinat can play and and be creative and that's the the key you know and so what i'm doing is what we call is it's pretty much the welfare factor but this is i'm putting some silver leaf on to finish the dessert so there you have it there you have a deconstructed tiramisu well, I have to say, when you said you were going to do a deconstructed tiramisu, that's not what I had imagined. That's beautiful. So all the, all the elements are on the plate. And that's all edible, Chef. Even the glitter. Except the slate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that might be a clean, but might, might take a little bit. As I said, everything on the plate has to be edible. And in this case, definitely this is, you know, what we serve and how we should go forward with making sure that everything on the plate is edible. It's definitely yeah. the well factor. When you carry that to a table and present that in front of your guests, that will definitely go. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So going back to some tips that I have is plan your menu. Choose the appropriate plate or serving apparatus that you're going to be doing, for instance, this. Consider the quantities of each element. As you can see, we're using uneven numbers and also the balance on the plate. Draw up a visual concept or a plan. I like doing that. It also gives you a bit of a, a time to change. And when you're doing it, you can actually uh, work out what works and what doesn't work. You know, from putting it on paper and putting it on a plate. 90% of the times is great, but other 10% you need to work on. Place the garnishes on your plate that make sure that they're edible and they make sense and that works with the dish. Check that the color, the symmetry, and the balance is all good and it's what you plan to put on. And keep the plates clean because we intend to use our fingers and if you've got gloves on, that's fine, but they're smudges, wipe the room. Lastly, keep it simple. Yeah. Just keep it simple. And just serve it with pride. Okay.
keeping that workspace around you clean and organized as well. I've noticed that you're very, very organized in the way you work. You've got all your um, elements together. Yep. You have all your um, accessories and your tools together. Everything's very organized, which I think really does help when you're mastering that plating. Absolutely. So I want to leave you with this. So if you use your plate as your canvas, be the artist and don't be afraid to experiment or um, try different things and be proud and make sure your signature is on the dish that you serve. So thanks for joining this um, evening with us on this um, Eat With Your Eyes and the Art of Plating and keep it cooking. So Andy... That was that was brilliant. Um, really great presentation. Some excellent plating there. I think you really explained to us very well the passion and the feeling that you have for this 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 really important part of cooking. So we've had a lot of a lot of questions in the chat. So I hope you're ready. Uh, so take a deep breath, breathe. You, you're now into into chatting That's hosting okay. mode. Perfect. So, so let's start with a few questions. Okay, we've got a nice one here. Um, it's not actually about plating. It's about an element on the plate. It's from the starter. How did you make the squid ink garnish? Is that a complicated process or? Oh, so it starts at about five o'clock in the morning and you go down when it's low tide. And, you know, going with the story, to go and catch that, that octa... No, I'm joking. So... It's... <laughs> So that's a, a chef's humor. But you do um, purchase nowadays um, squid ink that comes in little sachets at very um, Mediterranean delicacies uh, or tessons that you can get them from. So it's quite a simple, quite a simple recipe. So it's just the oil and um, uh, water, a little bit of flour, and uh, the squid ink. That is just emulsified together and put into a pan um, a hot nonstick pan and um, it's quite a messy affair if you ask me because it, all the fat splatters the whole um, surface where you where you cooking and but the the overall end product is fantastic so that's and it's also an element on the plate where it's a wow factor yeah you know and 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 believe it or not it, it does not stay in your teeth as country to believe Oh, that's brilliant to know. And also, it's a good uh, a good lesson for kitchen cleanliness as well, with all the mess that's involved in the creation. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> so, so you need your kitchen support there properly. Um, brilliant. Okay. Um, so we've got another question here. Love the presentation, Chef Andy. Can you give some generic suggestions for plating in day-to-day -day life at home? So, yeah, for example, you know where, when we're doing home cooking, maybe it's not quite so elegant. Our elements are maybe a little bit more uh, loose. Maybe we're serving more pies. How can we improve our plating at home? Would we use a digital analog or how would we sort of try to design that for ourselves? Well, um... <laughs> I'd love to say, just play with the food, play with the elements. And if it makes sense, then go with your gut feel. Um, I have my family saying that we eat at a restaurant every night because I'm playing around. I have all the dishes and a simple from a, a traditional pabuti, which is a, um, um, a, a good Cape Malayan dish and it's a baked uh, mince with a um, egg custard with turmeric and a lovely sort of curry flavor. Um, I cut them out after it's been set and placed on the plate with, you know, the rice scattered around it. So play with the elements. Um, don't be afraid, as I said. Um, just as long as it works and it doesn't look like a porridge bowl. Uh, <laughs> Remember how your mother said never to play with food? No, go for it. Oh, forget that. <laughs> forget that. Okay, so ignore, ignore mum. Play with food, but play with food yes. before you serve it to your guests. I won't answer that. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Okay, we've got another. Oh, we've got, we've got more questions. We've got more questions. Sorry, Andy, you're, you're here, you're here, you're here. At least 15 more minutes. <laughs> 
Um, so, so what is the, um, actually, this is a very interesting question from Osama Khalid. Um, what is the thought of plating on the rim of the plate? If you bring back the starter plate, we can see that you've, you've plated on the rim there. What is the idea? What's the thought behind this one? Uh, so, I like pushing boundaries. And I still remember in my training days and served something on the side of the plate, on the Steve. wide rim plate. And my, my head chef at the time spoke words to me that I could not understand. Now I understand them all because I'm qualified and gone through the years and experience. It is, it is something that not all chefs do and not all establishments do. But I, um, as I said, chefs, you know, stretch the boundaries. They, you know, push the boundaries. And if it works and, it's, and it lends itself to the flow of the dish and the contrast and, the, and, and it works, then why not? Mm -hmm. as, long as, as long as we're in a restaurant and your waiters, waitrons, servers understand it's not a soft spot to put your finger on. <laughs> so that's the communi communication there. but um i see it also being a trend which um it's all up to you being the artist you know putting it um on on, on the plate and you know making sure that it it fits and it goes with it with the elements Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so be bold. And again, preparation is very important in this. No, you've got to prepare your kitchen staff. You've got to prepare your front of house staff. If you're at home, you have to prepare the children ready to carry the plates. So as with everything, preparation is completely key in this one. No, Andy? <laughs> On the button. Definitely. Perfect. Okay, I'm learning lessons already. This is great. <laughs> so. Um, Got a slightly longer question now. Um, very interesting from Teresa Mendez. Um, so does, Chef Andy, do you fetch influence from your platings from the art world at all? Um, and, and if you do, how, how do you do this? So, you know, she's asking, do you go to museums? Do you look at art books? Do you follow work from a particular artist? And, and if not, um, you must have a very creative brain. So how, how do you sort of translate, you know, for example, with the uh, deconstructed tiramisu, how do you translate your ideas onto page? Does it come from art or is it just something from inside you? Definitely from inside here. Yeah, no, it's, um, as I said, you know, we all individuals as chefs and we all have our own creative ideas and um, way we do things. And that's why it's, it's fantastic to see chefs out there pushing the boundaries and doing what they do nowadays. Um, and it's, it's, it, it does help. To have a look and see what what is happening out there in the in the in the in the bigger scheme of things around the world. You know what are the chefs are doing, how they're doing, and it's 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 also um, you know I've had this passion from young, <laughs> so and I always find myself pretty artistic and um, and I try to relate it and put it onto a plate. So it 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 does help to go and see what's happening out there, and if you being inspired by seeing a, a painting or a, a, an art piece, then by all means, adapt it. Put your own signature on the plate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah, really coming from yourself, understanding um, the situation, I guess, is quite important. You know, to understand, um, you know, how and where you're going to serve that food and, and who to as well, I guess, is quite important, no? Correct. And, and also, as I said, keep it simple. You know, um, there are establishments out there and, and fantastic and, and really, really great places out there that specialize in certain types of um, plating techniques, um, you know, uh, which they have a whole team to do it. And, and it's, that's fantastic. We need those. We need those um, avenues to go to. And also, it is, you know, inspires the chefs out there, and especially, you know, the young generation coming through into our industry. And wanting to see, wow, I want to be like that. I want to do that one day. And that's where we're at at the moment. Mm -hmm. Which is amazing. No, it's, it shows the, uh, the, the breadth and the openness of, of, of cooking as a career and cooking as an art form as well. No, that we have so many different types for, for people to investigate, to go into. Um, there's the very fine dining, the haute cuisine, as you talked about earlier. And then we have the sort of the more middle um, you know, to high level uh, local cuisine that we have all over the world. 
all of them would require different types of plating, no? Correct. Absolutely correct. And it's all, you know, um, if you talk about, um, um, like us in New Zealand, it's, it's all got to do with, you know, where you come from and what you want to interpret and put on the plate, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and I think um, the, the, everybody loves that sort of thing. So it's homely, it's comfort, you know, and you don't want to get a plate in front of you and you look at it and you go, oh, how, how do I start eating this? You know, you want to get in there and go, where's my, my knife and fork? I want to climb in. You know, that's that's where you want to be at, you know. Mm -hmm. or so, we, sorry. No, 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 please. I'm just saying, or we get frightened when the plate gets put down in front of you. You go, oh, oh can I eat this? <laughs> Am I allowed to eat this? You know? Um, so, but that lends itself to where you go and, and the experience that you need to go and experience or want to experience. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. Very good. Um, Actually, a very interesting question here as well. Um, so when you're serving during service, I mean, this applies obviously at home and at, and at work as well. How do you actually keep um, food hot, especially when you've got so many different ingredients, potentially some of them warm, some of them cooler? Um, how do you keep things uh, hot or warm, at least, uh, whilst you're plating? Chef Mark. That's the microwave. No, I'm joking. No, no, no. Don't go there. Don't go there. So that's all in the in the planning stage, and um, and what you're going to be serving, whether you're going to quickly sauté it off or have a sauce that's on the side um, simmering, um, or your roast that's in the oven, um, just finishing off, taking it out, and it's resting on the side. So that's all. That's all the process of planning. And then once that is all in front of you, and it's come from the oven, it's come from the stove, it's come from um, a heating source. Your plates, if you've got hot plates, you'll have hot food. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty simple. And you go from there. And and hope that it's all hot when it hits the plate and gets carried out to the table fast enough as well, no? Yeah, well, yeah, that's the, the yeah. And uh, as far as uh, chefs is when it gets to the table, we don't say we don't care. We just make sure that it is what it is as we've plated it, that it arrives to the, the guest unharmed and at temperature and we hope for the best every single time um, <laughs> so we've got another interesting question here as well and actually i'm i'm very interested to know why why is um deconstructed presentation like we did with the with the dessert why is that so popular do you think it's because it gives a chef um the opportunity to show off some technical skills or is it just, is it something very modern? Or why do you think it's, it's so popular in a lot of the finer dining establishments that we see? So twofold, definitely for the chef to be, to play around and use the elements um, in their own way. But as long as it makes up, you know, the, the actual um, um, end result of that dessert they're serving. But also more importantly for our, our guests, that if they don't eat certain elements of that, they can have the opportunity to order it anyway. Mm -hmm. And then they can push it aside and not eat it. So it's, it's sort of twofold, but um, whether that's answered the question, but that's just my logic. And that's um, also, um, you know, trying it differently, textures um, and, and, and the soft textures, the crispy textures, um, have them all layered and apart from each other. And it gives the, the, the person or the, the guest that eats it, gets, gives them the opportunity to enjoy each ind individual flavors and textures, not all bunched in one. Just to let everybody watching now that there are all of the international culinary studio courses are available on hosco.com. Um, so if you go into the courses section of our website, you'll be able to follow any link to a number of courses that they've got. So good morning, good afternoon, and good night from, from me here in uh, Barcelona headquarters for Hosco and then from International Culinary Studio in Christchurch, New Zealand. Um, thank you very much all for your time and have, have a lovely rest of day or evening.